All right, let's do it live on a Reaction Monday edition of Cleveland Browns Daily. I am merely Bo. He is the great Z. How you doing, bud? I'm doing well. Before we get into the game, which obviously was incredibly disappointing, and we'll talk about that and where this 3-3 three and three Cleveland Browns team stands, I want to take a second to, to share some, some sad news, and that is Emery Crowder, who mm-hmm. was with us uh, when we did that amazing kind of you know World War II roundtable here. Yeah. Uh, Emery from Cleveland passed away today at 98 years of age. Miles Garrett was his favorite player. And the day that I actually met Emery, he went to a Browns game on his 95th birthday and received a number 95 Browns jersey. He was a Silver Star recipient on Saipan, where he saved the lives of 17 Marines. So uh, a, a, a true American hero. And um, we are lucky that we got to know him. Uh, the former Secretary of the Navy, Tom Modley, saying, uh, I'm better off to have known him. We're all worse off with him gone. An American original. Heroism surpassed only by his humility. So, Emery Crowder, uh, rest in peace. Was one of the more humbling and um, important segments we've ever done on this show, and one I'll never forget. And it was incredible to meet him, a true hero. True, true hero. Yes. Um, and thoughts and, and prayers with his family. And Yes. Uh, we've, we've lost a great one from our greatest generation. That's right. Um, so... <laughs> As as we make the transition to yesterday, <laughs> the um, all right. So we've obviously have injury news that is out there as well. So let yeah. let's get that to the people right away, okay. and then we can go back to 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 what was it was if anything could go wrong did go wrong Sunday. It, simply put, that that's what it was. It's basically, how I opened up my post game analysis. Did you? <laughs> nothing nothing went the way that I didn't even we have wanted the, it to go. I didn't even have the enthusiasm to watch it. There's nothing I like more than your. Your two-minute drills, your 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 wrap-ups, and and I didn't even have the energy to watch it. It was so brutal, um, but it it's worse today. It's worse today because um, we have the news from Coach that Kareem Hunt will have uh, will miss weeks with a significant calf injury. Uh, you got the feeling that that was the case when he was on the cart going off and tears were streaming down his cheeks. I'll be honest. I watched it happen. He comes out of the backfield to go out into a route and then starts hopping and falls mm-hmm. down. The gr- I thought he blew his Achilles. It's that nine times out of ten. So th- while this is not a great outcome, it is a substantially better outcome than an Achilles would have been, which would have yeah. ended his season, period, and, and could have lingered into next season as well. And so last night when I saw that it, Kevin's fan said it was a calf injury, not an Achilles, I said, this is great news. I immediately got yelled at by everybody on Twitter who was very upset after the game yesterday. But it is great news relative to what would have been a season-ending injury. Correct. The fact that Kareem Hunt will be back, and if we can handle our business, be here for the stretch run for this football team. There's still 11, 11 games to go. 11 games to go. It's bad now, but there are 11 games to go. A couple yep. more here, and then we've got, yep. we'll get to it all. Jeremiah Wusukoromo, high ankle sprain. He will miss weeks as Not well. Not great. Not great at all. I didn't see that one happen uh, on the television broadcast. I did not see. that I saw one him happen. come off in pain, go into the tent, and go into the locker room. So I knew yep. that was that was kind of the way of it. Coach saying that Baker and Odell they're going to gather more information in the next couple of days to determine status for them for Thursday. Uh, Nick Chubb progressing, but too early to say if he can go on Thursday as well. Of course, we were already out this game. Uh, Jed and Jack both tackles. Obviously, that was noticeable. And Jarvis Landry as well. And so we'll see how's the, how those goes on a short week. It's a, a ultra short week, obviously, playing on Thursday here against Denver. Yeah, and and I want to be optimistic about all of them, but I am not. So I, I don't know I, what the scenario will be. This very much, very well could be the Dearness Johnson show on mm-hmm. Thursday night against the Denver Broncos. Um, and, and hopefully, you get healthy along the line to give him a little bit more room. But uh, Yeah, we are beaten up. We're beaten up. I thought Odell played an excellent game. Uh, His route on that first and 20 play is as good as you'll see anybody run in the NFL. He was open. In fact, I thought had an opportunity again here in this game to probably hang 150 and a touchdown or two on them. He's getting open. Yep. There's no doubt about it. He is getting open, and we've just got to have the protection. We've got to have the vision, and we've got to have the execution to capitalize on – things that are out there right now offensively. This was not a great offensive performance by any stretch. In fact, I'd say it was a bad offensive performance by the Cleveland Browns. Our execution right now is a reminiscent to me of, of early last season. Again, and there were times I remember doing the show this time last year, week six, we got blasted in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I'll never forget. And we were saying, week. look, there's stuff out there. 
There are plays to be made. That is still true. We're just mm-hmm. not making them for a variety of reasons. This is not singularly on anybody. Correct. It is a variety of things that are going on. But we are not capitalizing on our opportunities defensively. Too many busts still. Um, and we're just, again, third down. You, you hold them on a third and 21, basically, and a third and 13 to field goals. It's a totally different game. Mm-hmm. And the defense actually, when you go drive by drive, did some good things. The first drive was a, a complete failure with the two with the three third downs. Of course, he couldn't be Awful. worse. But the next drive is all when flags. all the penalties they go all the I'll way down the you. field on penalties. So there's that we need to address too, or you and I will, or I sure. will. So they said you keep you in the clear. Um, but you also you've got that. Um, but you're right. It, the, 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 you're in the game. It's twenty three to fourteen, and you have the ball. So despite all of it, you're in the game. Uh, in this thing and it didn't feel like you were now you get a Hail Mary and all of those things and that was wonderful and give you a little bit of hope um, big picture wise I, I hate using terms like this because it's you know it's inflammatory it can be hyperbolic I do feel this is a crossroads when you factor in the injuries that have incurred who's already hurt the way that the loss happened the short week it feels like if we're going to be who we think we're capable of being this year, we'll respond well against a lot of adversity this week. Against a team that's coming that's in bad. on a three-game losing streak of its own. They're bad. They, they were they're drilled at home by the Raiders. It wasn't even as close as the score would lead you to believe. Yes. So they're bad. So there's an opportunity. Then you get a long week. Mini buy. Hopefully heal up. Hopefully and then you have a heal big up. One in Pittsburgh. And then you go Pittsburgh and you go Cincinnati. Big one here against Pittsburgh. Yeah. Right. You go Pittsburgh and Cincinnati, and that's this that. three game stretch is massive. Right. It, but it starts right now. Yes. It's hard to imagine a scenario where, with when you factor in all of the injuries and everything else, that if you don't, I mean, like losing to Denver, I don't even want to consider it. But right now, like whatever this team's going to be in December, I think we'll look back at right now, starting today, next three weeks, and you'll know what you are. I th- I think that's perfectly said. Yeah, the next three weeks you talk about this Denver game and then two in the division against what has become a – they're not great. I mean, anybody watched last night, Steelers are not great. No, they're not. <clears throat> but that's a game Cincinnati Bengals team. And you and I, I think, both in our preseason rankings had them ahead of the Steelers, and they certainly are looking that way. They acted way accordingly. Right now. It's Joe Burrow is excellent. I've been saying he it. He makes everything that, – that everything's a layup is a layup. Easy. For Burrow. Everything Smooth. that – Yeah, everything that – Every every time that there's a, a play action on thirty, it's a nice easy rollout. It's in stride. It's a guy turning up field. It's everything that's designed to be easy is. And so they're and by the way, they've got one of the most dynamic receivers in the NFL that they drafted this year in Jamar Chase. And this is why you don't draft left, left tackles. You draft receivers because they're game wreckers. Yeah. This kid's a game wrecker. Jamar Chase is a game wrecker. So back to our game. You've got the first series. What are we? We gave up eight of fifteen on third down. I want to say. Yeah, for the game they were over fifty percent, and we were at thirty percent, which was one of the keys for me. One of was your us keys. extending yeah. our drives. Forget them, our drives. We did not do it. So you, you have that. You have probably four, and even Dean Blandino. I'll use him since he was on the call, and I text you what he said during the game because it's hard for you. You're on the side. Sometimes it's hard for me watching TV. I know sometimes it's hard for you because you're like, I, I mean, you're on the other side. What, oh, what these all happened like? right in front of did me. They- <laughs> Every the Denzel, so, all of them that was on my side, like, on that Malik, side. Malik McDowell's roughing the passer Crazy. as he's falling down. Both, both of them. The one on the sidelines too was absurd. outrageous. He's out, pushing him out of outrageous. bounds. Yeah, it was. It was. And the it other was one, a, Kyle Murray didn't even fall down. He was so roughed by Malik Jackson that he didn't even. He didn't fall. fall down. Yeah, the one, the pass interference on the on the second series where Kyler looked left for a millisecond and just threw it. Just it's threw just it. a bailout. He yeah. just threw it on third and forever. And that ends up being a pass interference where John Johnson, by the way, picked it off five yards in front of where the ball got to. And out of bounds. And out of bounds. So, like, so it was uncatchable, picked off by our, all of those things. All so true. All of those things happened. It was it was bad. I, They threw a play on like it felt like nine consecutive plays they threw a flag. It felt like. Well, it was at least half that. It was at least half that. Because some of them started stretch. throwing them on them too. Right. It was so many that – and I, I texted you. I was worried about your safety no, no, no. because it I'll was. I you. could, you could hear it. Like I'm like, this is not going to go well. It was, it was close to. I felt like an eruption happening in inside that building. Like if the next flag had been on us again, and it was a ridiculous call akin to the other two, I felt like anything was at that moment possible. People were livid. There was a lot of emotion behind it, uh, and you, you knew it was wrong. I mean, even Kevin Stefanski, no fluster, even keel. He was beside himself 
Yeah. And he just kept saying, well, then you have to call it both ways. And then you get the one with Odell on the sideline later in the game, which was even more of a pass interference than any of ours. I mean, they called one where Denzel almost intercepted the pass. Denzel was running he, the route. Yeah, he, it was per, he mirrored him perfectly, and he, he knocked it away. I, with well, the they right say hand, he, like, his they, left hand was on his him? His left hand was on him, which is something that's consistent okay, in the league all the time. Come on. So we don't know how to call pass interference, and we don't know how to call, how to call protecting the passer. Roughing the passer, we don't know how to call it. We've been the, the one on Kyler, the one is absurd, the one that's become a gif of where he doesn't even hit the ground. Yeah. But the other one when he's running to the sideline is just as bad because – what do you want him to do? It's bang, bang. He's jumping up yes. to knock the ball down. And Kyler's falling back. He's, and he's already falling, falling himself it down takes, anyway. It takes nothing to push him. So that is an abomination. Um, and so that's brutal. But then it comes back to us. And it comes back to giving up 8 of 15 on third down. Yep. It comes back to – Third and 19. I think they had the game five, right there. That I defined the game had, right there. Third that and is, 19. Third and 19. I think we, they, we get, they got five first downs off penalties from us. That's right, five. Yeah. Yep. So that can't happen. And then we, right now, we have some things that we're doing offensively and defensively that, frankly, we're not good enough to overcome. The busts in coverage, yep. the inability on fourth down is real. We, we, you you got to get points. In those scenarios, it's tough to overcome that. It's so deflating, and it's so victorious for the defense. And you say, well, a seven, of course, we get it. I understand it. But, man, we, we, we're we not good right now on fourth down. I'm and not... so all of those things, fact, then factor in the execution you talked about earlier, and it's it, that's why I said, and the injuries, my God, it's all of it. A good process is a good process. The outcome of a good process doesn't always go the way right. that you want. But the process is still sound. It comes down to execution and taking care of business. If you go back and watch that first fourth down, there was a – Odell Beckham Jr. was wide open. Yeah. So there was an opportunity to make a play there. Baker was trying to read the right side where they had the trips and you had all that action there. It was not open, but because they showed that it was going to be a cover zero, which it was, they brought – I think they brought seven and left four in coverage. You needed somebody to win quickly one-on-one. Unfortunately, the only person who did win quickly was Odell coming off the left, and our eyes were to the right. And by the time you pump it, it's over. It's done. And so that, you know, again, that doesn't mean – A, it doesn't mean it was a bad decision. B, it doesn't mean it was a bad play call. C, it means it was poor execution in a variety of manners that did not allow for a successful outcome. I get that three, you'd feel much better right there if you got the three, and maybe there is a psychological component. I think there is. I think there's I think that, you know, if you go for it on fourth twice in the red zone, you convert once, and one time it ends up in a touchdown, that you've now outscored kicking two field goals. So you just need to do it, be good 50% of the time. Right now, we're not. And we're taking – it. it is deflating. You're right. It's massively deflating. And we saw – you know, and here's the difference, right? You go to the Chargers-Ravens game, they go for it – fourth and one on their own 19 the chargers do in the third quarter the ravens stop them game over good night irene they did it in the first half baltimore's up 14 to three and they have it at their own 40 fourth and seven and they go for it and baltimore stops them again it's the stops money them again it's that mo- those money money plays, plays. It's and that's where we're all year we're against not, the good teams we're not there we're not there and here's the other thing i think if we all were being honest with ourselves right now if we played the schedule game at the beginning yeah. We'd think we'd be four and two through six. Yeah. So you'd say, okay, we're going to beat, we're probably going to lose at Kansas City. We win the two home games, probably lose one of either Minnesota or the Chargers on the road. And then we would probably think preseason anyway, we'd come home and handle business against Arizona. Correct. I think that's fair. Four and two. So we're a game off of that. Now it happened in rather spectacular fashion that makes you feel sick to your stomach. And the other notion is that, you know, defensives have figured out our offense. We're a week off of putting up 500 yards, eight yards of play, no, 42 points. Mm-hmm. And and I would say anybody who says that, watch the tape. Our offense, there were plays. We yeah. didn't make them. Yeah. And that's where it's coming down to. That's what's hard. And I think that's some of the frustration Baker shared after the game. And I think some of our players is when you're when you don't execute, when you know that you should have executed better, that's frustrating. Yeah. You know, he's interception to Hollywood Higgins. Hollywood's open. It was just a bad ball. He just made a physical mistake. And the Browns are just having these execution breakdowns, I'd call them, at incredibly inopportune times. Yeah. And he heard Joel Batonio say, 
You know, people, why, why, if we don't have our tackles around, we don't have Nick Chubb, what are we going five wide for early in the game? Joel Batonio just told you they were playing a 6-2 against us. Mm -hmm. A 6-2. Yeah. That means they don't think that we can throw the ball. So we're going to try to then spread them out and throw the ball. We should have advantageous matchups. We didn't capitalize on those things. It comes back down to execution. Not a great game. Not one that you feel good about. The only thing you feel good about is that, look, last year in week six, we got absolutely walloped mm -hmm. in Pittsburgh. And we all thought it was over. And then we came back, and we won, and we started to get it going with that win in Cincinnati. That's what we need here. But we need to get that win in this game. I'm, I'm with you. It's critical. Just like I thought that last game was bigger for us than it was for Arizona, they had every excuse in the world to lose that game. Yeah. And they won anyway. But this one, for us, this is massive. We have to win this game. Yeah, and it's going to be cobbled together. Because it is uh, now they are they're not going to feel sorry for you because they were without their receivers and Chubb and everybody else. I mean, so they're they're battered too. Yeah. Um, this this injury situation we have is bordering on cataclysmic. I mean, you can't. These are our, some of our very most important players that are missing games. I mean, you're going to probably you know hopefully Chubb, but I, I'm not optimistic. No. I mean, you're talking about no Chubb or Hunt. You're talking about JOK. Both tackles missed. Jarvis hasn't played yet, and who knows what this week's going to look like. You've missed Newsom. You have missed incredible – some of the most important players on the, in the it's franchise. Five of your starting 11. Jeez. Jarvis and Odell haven't played a snap together. Yeah. So, Not it's a one. lot. It's a lot to overcome. It is a lot to overcome. But, but there is still 11 weeks of this season left. And the last time we felt like this was a year ago after Pittsburgh – and you go down, you beat Cincinnati. Remember how brutal that Cincinnati? That could have gone one way or another at the, in, in yeah. Cincinnati. And you go down and you win Donovan Peoples-Jones, well, who, by the way, you throw it to him, he catches it. I mean, I just think that's just pretty simple. You throw it to him, he catches it. We've been saying it forever. Nobody, let, Listen, nobody's Nobody. been beating the Donovan Peoples-Jones drum bigger than you and I. No. Jeez. So there's some things that got to get sorted out. Like that one catch he had on the, the curl route where the guy was literally in his jersey. Yeah. His hands are so strong. So strong. He, you know who he reminds me of now? And I want to see We haven't seen him in a lot of yards after the catch situations to maybe do this. But the way that he attacks the football and the way that it doesn't matter if anybody's – he reminds me of Anquan Bolden in that sense. Just a big, strong yeah. guy who is physical. Yeah. I, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, There's I, a little, little Michael Thomas to him too. I covered, it, I covered him down in a Yeah, Alahassee. very much, very much. Used to play a lot, of the, a lot of the NCAA football with him if memory serves. Duh. Back in the day. Those are your OBM hot topics. Ohio Business Machine, for copy or provide your Cleveland Browns. I got the city right that time. <laughs> All the X's and O's for your office. Call 2 and 6 4 8 5 2000 or visit ohiobusinessmachines.com. And the Browns Bundle is back, participating Buffalo Wild Wings locations. With the purchase of a Browns Bundle, fans get a limited edition collectible Browns glass. The 1499 Browns Bundle includes a six-piece wing, fries, and a Browns glass. This season collection honors the Browns' 75th anniversary with three unique designs, the 75th anniversary logo, throwback brownie, and the 1946 patch. You will hear from Coach Stefanski coming up next on the program. We are off and running Cleveland Browns Daily, 850 ESPN Cleveland.
EOX Vantage has that local presence with the global footprint entrusted by some of the world's biggest brands. This is a testimonial from EOX Vantage client Ed Scheel. Ed is the vice president of Skyward Specialty Insurance. He says the tools we've designed with EOX Vantage are real business changers that open the door for us to all sorts of valuable opportunities and efficiencies. They help our new team members stay on the same page while collaborating remotely, make it easier to communicate with customers, cut down on manual data entry and the associated input errors, and cut hours off processes and response times operationally. It is a brand new ball game for us. Learn more about EOX Vantage by visiting www.eoxvantage.com or call 216-298-1616 for more. And now here's your head coach, Kevin Stepanski, at the podium. You know, you guys are down eight and a half. Disappointed with uh, our performance yesterday. And then uh, ultimately, we're moving on and we're full speed ahead on the Denver Broncos. And this thing comes at you quick. And uh, we're going to make sure that we turn the page with the players as they come in here this afternoon and we get started on uh, the Denver Broncos team and Coach Fangio who does a great job uh, with their defense. I think they got explosive players on their offense. So it's going to be quite the challenge on Thursday night. And with that, I'll take any questions. Um, Kevin, as far as Kareem's concerned, was that an IR situation? Is that a three game situation? I think it will work through all that uh, on the roster, but it's, it's likely, yeah, in that it's going to be more than three games. Got you. And then as far as Baker's concerned, he said that the, the show did pop out twice yesterday. On the short week, Kevin, is this a, a good situation where it might be wiser to have him sit, play Keys, and then kind of go from there, giving Baker a little bit of extra time? Yeah, I think we'll make sure, Tom, to, to work through all that in the next couple of days and, and obviously take the, you know, what the medical staff says, what Baker in this case says. And we do that for all of our players. Uh, that's you know, making sure we make prudent decisions with, with all of these guys. Hey, Kevin, with so many injuries and uncertainty, how did you go about devising a game plan when the game's three days away? Well, we're still devising that game plan, and I think that's what we have to do. We have to be fluid in, in what we do. Uh, w w the truth is we may not know who's available to us for another 24, 48 hours, if you will. Uh, so that's that's what we have to do, and that's uh, – no different than everybody uh, in the NFL right now. You have guys that uh, may make it uh, to, to the game, may not. And that's just, that's life in the big city. Hey, Kevin, I have a question about the uh, defense. You know, the team has cited communication as the biggest issue to address when it comes to the defense and getting them back on track. I'm just curious on how you go about fixing that. How do you start that? Is there a specific area like detailed walkthroughs or signal calling changes that you begin at? How does that process start? Yeah, Cam, I think each week uh, we, we try to make sure that the communication is on point really through them in the meeting rooms, those walkthroughs that you mentioned, we've added walkthroughs uh, going back a few weeks. We've added walkthroughs uh, on, on Thursday to, to over put a premium on it. So uh, it's, it's ultimately it has to be better uh, across the board. And that's really for the team when it comes to communication, because oftentimes some of those mistakes you see are, are, are a product of miscommunication. So we'll keep working uh, very hard at that. Yeah, Kevin, I, I know you've said in the past you you were going to be aggressive on fourth down. You said that before the season even started. And we asked you about it yesterday, but does it ever enter your mind to maybe change the thought process on going forward? Or is it strictly we are going to go forward and we have to execute better? Yeah, I mean, I really believe we have to, ex we have to call better plays and we have to execute better. Uh, we need to... In those moments when, when we're going for it, uh, I, I got to make sure that uh, I give the guys something they can execute, uh, something that we can get the ball out of our hands on time, those type of things. Uh, and that's where I need to be better. Each game is, is different. Um, I've said it before. We're not being aggressive just for the sake of being aggressive, we're trying to be smart in what we're doing. But, Kevin, I'm sorry, but to no, follow no. up, we have to be better. That's uh, pretty obvious. Thanks, Kevin. Sorry, I know you got a busy week. Um, but how did Baker look to you, though, otherwise yesterday? I know the, the injury has obviously been an issue, but was he making the reads that you wanted? Was he, was he as crisp as you needed him to be? I don't think any of us were as crisp as we needed to be, Tom. Uh, you know, we turned the ball over three times. They turned it over. We had zero takeaways. Uh, we had been doing a decent job of taking care of the ball, uh, you know, up until yesterday. We just were a little too careless at times. Um, and again, we didn't take it away. So you finish minus three, uh, it's, it's just not how you're going to get a win uh, in this league. Hey, Kevin, sorry if I, uh, I missed early, but um, did you mention Nick Chubb? Do you have any feel for if he can go Thursday? 
Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not going to rule him out yet. Obviously, a short week makes it harder, uh, but he's, uh, he's progressing. Okay, and then on, on JOK, um, is it a high ankle, and is he going to be going on our IR like Kareem? It's a high ankle, and, and I think we're going to work through all the uh, roster designations uh, today. Hey, Coach, I know Tom asked about this, but last year, uh, you were really good at a turnover ratio, and this year, I mean, you're near the top. Right now, you're more towards the bottom. What What is the major difference? You got some good players on defense, just not taking it away. Yeah, I want to say we're middle of the pack, and that's not where we want to be when it comes to turnover margin. We, we put a huge emphasis on it. Uh, we drill it every day. Uh, again, we, we had too many giveaways yesterday, um, and that's uncharacteristic of how we've been playing. And then we have to do a better job, and, and those things come via tip balls. They come via uh, great plays on the ball, knocking, you know, rip attempts, getting the ball out. It was on the ground a few times. We didn't get it. So it's going to continue to be a huge emphasis of ours, uh, and, and sometimes they come in bunches, but, but we got to make sure that we take that thing away. Hey, Kevin, uh, I want to ask about a specific play from yesterday as part of a bigger picture. On the play where Baker got hit by Watt and fumbled and hurt the shoulder, he, he looked like he had Odell in front of him. He sort of pumped it and then brought it down and tried to escape. Um, we just had the TV feed. I don't know if he had a guy in his passing lane or what, but a th would you preferably like to see Baker just take that short pass to Odell there? And how, how has Baker done in taking the throws that might be there in front of him versus maybe trying to hold onto the ball and make a big play throughout the season? Yeah, Doug, I'd tell you on that specific play, uh, Quite honestly, it wasn't a very good play call. Not not many people open on that play. Um, they covered it pretty well. Uh, he, you know, Baker was getting close to having a scramble there. So it's not like there was anybody wide open. But to your point, Doug, I tell you, there's a, there was a play late. Um, I don't know if it was earlier or later than that, uh, where he took Kareem on a similar type concept where Kareem was open and he, and he dotted it on him right now. Uh, so that's always an emphasis of our quarterbacks, knowing when to be aggressive, when, when to take those uh, things that are in, right in front of you. Hey, Kevin, I know after the game you said Arizona's big personnel had something to do with you going empty early, but how much did not having Nick and Kareem being beat up even before the game affect kind of your early decisions? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was part of it. Uh, you know, we, we wanted to make sure we spread the ball around and uh, we, we felt like we had opportunities uh, there in some of those uh, concepts versus their bigger personnel. Um, but uh, I credit the Cardinals. They, they did a nice job. Well, then moving forward, you won't have Kareem Thursday. We don't know about Nick yet. How much confidence do you have in the run game um, just as itself with, you know, two backup guys and maybe even backup tackles still? Yeah, I have confidence in our guys, Scott. Uh, I think you've seen it over the course of time. Guys step up. That's the, again, the nature of the beast. The NFL, you're going to have guys in and out of your lineup every single week, short weeks. Uh, it's a challenge and it's a challenge for both teams. So who's ever in there, uh, I can promise you I have a ton of confidence in them. Uh, yeah, Coach. Uh, one more thing about the defense. Just considering the, all the issues, do you have you considered simplifying things just to, I don't know, is that, would that help? Yeah, I, I think those are the type of things that we're always uh, discussing. Back in 30. On offense, defense, and special teams. Uh, we need to, we need to be better. We need to be more consistent. Uh, some of our uh, mistakes. It's, it really isn't a matter of simple or hard. We just got to make sure we do our job. Uh, so, but I, what ultimately I tell you, Marlon, is we, we got to look at every angle uh, and what we can do better as coaches, what we can do better as players. Does the coaching staff feel a little bit out of sync too? I think anytime you lose a game like that, we all feel out of sync. Uh, we just, we, we didn't do a good enough job. You're up. Yeah, look, coach, coach taking a lot of the heat there. That's his style. That's how he does it. Um, and and putting it a lot on him. The buck stops with him. So I understand that certainly. Um, in normal circumstances, what you would say is sometimes a short week. And I feel like you and I have done this a couple of times over the course of our now four seasons together, where there has been a a disappointment on a Sunday and a short week on a Thursday. And I remember the Jets game, for example, our first year here when Baker yep. came in, and we we're like, you just want to get right back out on the field and play. And it can be beneficial. However, with the injuries that we have, this this one Thursday will be how can you patchwork something together? This will be how can you – now, they're no juggernaut. Far from it. They're one no. of the worst teams in the league. Um, and they're hurt too, very injured. Uh, but this will be 
find a way is what that's going to be on on Sunday or on Thursday rather. It's a t- it's a game that you absolutely should go out there and find a way to win. And look, teams get blasted. It happens. You know what? It's how you respond to that that matters. I'll tell you, people may have forgotten this. The Rams, granted it was their own, it's their only loss of the year, but they got blasted 37 to 20 by this Cardinals team yeah. at home. They come out the next week on a short week. They follow up a Cardinals beating at home. Short week, they go into Seattle, beat the Seahawks, and then lay one on the Giants this week. That's what we need to do. We need to bounce back from this. We need to patch it together. This is a Broncos team that has lost three games in a row in ugly fashion. Well, aren't there wins against the two New Yorks in Jacksonville, So even when they were healthy? They beat the Giants 27-13, the Jags 23-13, the Jets 26-0. Yeah. They lost to the Ravens 23-7, the Steelers 27-19, and the Raiders 34-24. And in your, to your point, that game was not that close. Two of those losses coming at home. Yes, this is a team that we need to get well. Yeah, and you the you know it's this is a game. I mean, you, if you can win ten seven, I mean, like that might be what's required. I, it, depending on who's back, and and who's not, and the laundry list of injuries is just that. It is long. It is distinguished. So you're you're gonna have to find a way to just put one together and get a win and and get yourself to four and three. Get yourself a, a mini bye this week. Is- and it's, it's as close to a must win as you're going to get in week six or seven or whatever the heck we're in as you're going to get. You don't have JOK, but you've got everybody else that you wanted to have on defense. So this is a game where this defense lean against on, an lean offense that is not, not elite by any stretch of the imagination, you need to take advantage of that. By the way, just as a total aside. Sure. The Cardinals put the ball on the ground four times yesterday. Mm-hmm. Lost none. For the season now, 12 fumbles, one loss. That is outrageous luck. How much of it is like what happened last year with Kyler or yesterday with Kyler where he's he's fumbles it and he's the one on it? I wonder how many of them are his. It felt like all he's, of them. Well, for us, they were. But, I mean, he's so quick. He's so quick to the ground. He's so quick, period. He's um, impressive. He is. We said that two years ago when we saw him as a rookie. Two like, years ago. He's a different quarterback than he was then. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is he is now much – happier to use his legs he'll run if he needs to but he's happier to use his legs to extend plays and then make plays down the field whereas yeah. then he was running he and Kenny and Drake that day ran all over us down there uh in the Phoenix area Glendale yeah but he is now he's just and his placement and it's his throwing motion is so fast and yep. so effortless it's a flick yeah, effortless it is. Yep. it is not a body wind up or any of that it's just Yep. He threw one. The most impressive throw I thought he made all day was actually an incompletion that was right on our sideline to Christian Kirk, who caught it and dropped it once he went out of bounds, but maybe a little out of bounds, that was right over one defender in front of another, and it didn't even look like he was looking that way and just put it right. I mean, literally probably threw it through a window the size of a football from where he was trying to put it. Incredible. It's also worth noting from his perspective that, and we, we had the Arizona guest on last week, and of course this would be true, that he's basically run the same offense since he was 15 a variation of it because they ran this offense at Texas A&M when he was there. They ran this offense at Oklahoma when he's there. They're running it now in the league. Like he knows this. It's the reason where even on the, the bailout pass interference when he throws it down the left side to DeAndre Hopkins, he knows he's there even though he doesn't even look. Then look. Knows but, exactly the the depth he's going to be at yep. to where and he gets a bailout call, but that's the job, yeah. right? We see that, folks, we are not the only ones. These These pass interference penalties are happening all over the league. Right now, there, you, that's why you see so many former players. Mitchell Schwartz, latest among them last week. There was another yesterday where this the officiating in this league is under incredible scrutiny because the inconsistencies in the pass interference penalties and the inconsistencies in the roughing the passer. Now, these are done because the data says you like a lot of offense and everybody does, but it's got to be fair. And right now it's not. And it's it's costing teams games. I'm not saying it cost us a game. We got. You beasted need, pretty good, but in terms of – You need the sky judge, and he needs to have it. that authority. It's too late. He does not have that. There's somebody who you know they can talk to who says, oh, the spot's off or whatever, but they don't have the authority to say, we need to get these things right. There's too yeah. much at stake. Not the reason we lost. No. And, again, we're 3-3. Three and three. It feels like we're talking as though we were 0-6, oh well, which we've done in the past. We're just not where we should be, and that didn't pass the eye test. We have a chance to get it right, though, and this is a we are entering a critical stretch. Yeah. I, I think the reason this one hurts is because it's probably the first time under Coach Stefanski that we've had one of these that felt like you're going to win and you didn't. 
for, for me it was anyway. Even last year in Pittsburgh, like we were still finding our way. It wasn't like we thought. I mean, this was one where I realized they came in 5-0, and oh, but we said last week the things that we do well they struggle at. You thought you'd be able to run the ball on them. You didn't know you'd be without both tackles as you ended up being a bit, well, without both tackles. You thought you'd be able to get pressure with Kyler up the middle. How many sacks did we have? Two. Two? Yeah. I'd like a ruling, though. My understanding is that when a ball is snapped and yeah. a bad snap and the quarterback goes and picks it up, the first person who touches him is usually credited with a sack. We should have had three. In that case, they did not call that a sack. Well, so for the over-under You're game. You're trying to tweak the over-under. <laughs> Give see how it's going already. I'm on to you. We were in the same boat, dude. <laughs> Just saying. Dude. I'm trying to help you out, Gibbe. I, Jesse Gibbe is more fun at 4-1. <laughs> and one. Nathan, Just If you go 1-4 and, and I go on 5, that doesn't make it help. fun. I'm winning. Oh, he, boy. He, even, he even stretched out the lead a little bit last week. I don't even uh, – I, I just know winning. Stretched it out. <laughs> you do. I think you, I think you put another four and one on the books. Good chest to give. I told you. Look, I told you when it's the scores, you got to make all your you money make, the first make four weeks. Early kids. You got to make them your first four weeks. Tough. Told you. Tough going of it. Yeah. Tough uh, sledding on the scores. All right. You're listening to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Bo here for Raising Cane's. What do you get when you combine the best ingredients with the best crew? You get Raising Cane's quality chicken finger meals made just for you, in fact. Join the crew. Ready to safely serve our community. Apply today at work at canes.com or text RC Jobs to 97211. Standard message rates may apply. Raising Cane's is one love. So we are three and three, as you mentioned. Um, let's just go logistically. We were going through the, the, the injury report, and it's a substantial one. Um, if it is De- De- Ernest as your only tailback, then who else is in the wings waiting uh, to help out on Thursday if indeed Nick Chubb joins Kareem Hunt as down? Well, and it, the, the tough part, right, is that it's a short week. And so, and, and you don't know about Jarvis. And, and you're starting to get the sense that, you know, perhaps Jarvis won't be ready for Thursday. So, Demetric Felton, who played running back in college, he's been a receiver for this football team. Yes. I know it says on that depth chart that he's running back, but he doesn't he didn't take any reps this week at running back. He took all his reps at receiver. He played receiver in the game. So John Kelly, who had that a nice that game against the Giants, I want to say it was in the preseason, where he had a little yeah. bit of an explosion. He would be probably activated from the practice squad, especially if, if Kareem goes on IR. I bet he would just get the immediate call up to being on the roster. And that's where you would be at running back. You'd have Johnny Stanton. You'd have Felton in an emergency situation. But it would be the Dearness Johnson shows, frankly, is what it would be. I think you'd become your full-time back. And by the way, going back and watching the tape, that Hail Mary doesn't happen without Dearness Johnson. Pretty good pick up there, wasn't it? Marcus Golden looped all the way around to where nobody would expect him. And as Baker rolled right, Dearness saw him and put him right on the ground, allowing that play to happen. Um, but it would be Dearness Johnson there. Now you go to tackle. You got Blake Hance, you have got James Hudson, Alex Taylor, who was with you all preseason, cut, brought back to the practice squad last week, was active this week. He he's your third tackle now. I mean, it's dire at tackle. And I think it's my guess is that there's probably more likelihood of Conklin than Wills, but you'd like to have both of those guys back. Yeah. So I mean, we could be looking at rolling out kind of a, a starting offense that is probably the same at receiver. I think Odell should be fine. I mean, he played through that shoulder and played, again, I thought he played very, very well in this game. Um, And then you had, you know, you'll have them, you'll have your tight ends, but, you know, your line could be without the tackles. Your running back's definitely without Hunt. It sounds like maybe Chubb as well. So, yeah, this could be the Dearness Johnson show. This is a game, though, You look, you got to get done. It's everybody needs to get in there. Everybody needs to step up. This Dearness is good. As, you know, Chubb and Hunt, no, but he's been a guy who's been very serviceable for his career, over five yards of carry, and we're going to need him. Now, this is this is one of the best run defenses that we have faced. The Broncos, nobody really has run on against them except for the Steelers. Najee Harris, 142 yards for the Steelers in that game. He rushed for 122. No other team of running backs has rushed for 100 against this Broncos team. So it's a tough matchup. This is a tough – it's a good defense, not a great offense. This is a game where our defense needs to come out and flat out dominate. No, yeah, I mean – Yes, it's that type. I mean, they, that's what I'm saying. Like, they are not going to feel sorry for your injuries. They don't have Judy. They don't have Hamler. Uh, they don't have Bradley Chubb. Like, they don't, they, they've had all sorts of injuries Judy as well. Judy could be back. He's I'd activated to practice. I would, too. I don't, I don't want it. I would think that they would use the, you know, the extra long bye week to, to get him right. Um, but, you know, and defensively, you know, in regard to the run game, you know, Derek Carr had a day against them throwing the ball. They, they've given up a lot of that. Najee, with that explosion for him, he's really – He's gotten better last night. You know, he was able to get in the run game in the pass game and help you out. And he, he's a really good player. They just aren't have an ability to run the ball. He's a fine fantasy player. He, he's was, doing, he was. He's doing just fine for you. He's man. a good football player, too. He, picks, oh, yeah. he does great in blitz pickup. He does great as a relief valve for Roethlisberger. Well, we're now oh, connecting good. on those. We are. Early in the season, not. 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 And the not. reason, of course, we say we is because you and I both drafted him in fantasy. And early on, we're quite frustrated yes. by the inability to find him in the flat. But now they have sorted that out. Um, but him having success running against Denver, that was the first time that he had success running the ball. Up until that point, it had all been you – know, he was he was Mr. 20 carries 54 yards he early was. this season. He was. Uh, but but got it going a little bit. They're not great. In fact, they're, they're quite frankly the opposite of great. Yeah. There's not really anything that scares you with what they do um, in the in – the, out at receiver, Fant's a nice player. Sutton's fine. Sutton's good. He's a good player. Yep. Um, they've gotten Javante Williams going a little bit. He was their draft pick that I know They don't give him the ball, though. If you look, they split it with he and Melvin Gordon. I mean, when I say they are split. We had 15 targets last week. and Gordon Identical. Had, yeah, Gordon is right around the same. So they kind of it's kind of a split between the two of them. But he is coming along a little bit. Um, over the, He's over a the big play, though. That's what scares me. His He is a chunk run 
runner. For the season, Gordon, 70 carries. Javante Williams, 65. Gordon, 16 targets, 13 catches. Javante Williams, 15 targets, 14 catches. I mean, they split out. Cortland Sutton, though, 471 yards, 15 yards a catch. He, he can do some things. He's dangerous. Tim Patrick is the reliable one. He's got 344 and three touchdowns, and they've got Noah Fant, 273, and a touchdown as well. Yeah, they're – I would say that, but I remember we went to them, remember, a couple of years ago, and it was a bomb to Sutton. It was a 75-yard catch and run to Noah Fant, and they had another big play. They had three chunk plays that basically iced us out in that game. Yeah. You can get home on their front. Uh, Our D-line should have a day. Our our D-line should have a day. And honestly, it's the type of game where it it will be the defensive – it's going to be on the defensive side. It's going to have to be pretty good to to sort it out. And – as you mentioned, I mean, you're devastated by the loss of JOK, but other than that, you're pretty you're there close to where you need to be defensively. Yeah. And How did it. Newsom uh, look? He looked good, and he came out of it uh, feeling great, no worse for wear. So I think that his reps will increase. He could go back to his starting role. I'm not sure if that's how, they, how they're how they going to do it, but, you know, Greedy's played well in his absence. Um, although he and A.J. – he had a tough time, I think, with A.J. Green. A.J. Green still got some juice yeah. left. That's quite the receiving core they have. With what they can do with all those guys, Kirk flies. He flies. Rondale Moore is just a jitterbug. He's bounces around. Give him some handoffs gets, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. He's he's scary. And, and Hopkins is just maybe. I mean, it's Devonte Adams, and then maybe DeAndre Hopkins yeah. is second. And Devontae's probably in his own category right now. But yeah, yeah, they're right there. They're right there. That that NFC West. I know we'll go around the league in a bit. That NFC West is going to be as the Rams have the one slip up against them. But other than that, they've been steamrolling and they steamrolled again yesterday. So, and, and Seattle's in in big trouble. Do you think that, uh, do you think that Russ knew that the camera was on him when he was faking the two minute drill? I don't know. Do you think he knew? (laughs) Do you really need to get on your knee in the fake huddle? I mean, it's incredible (laughs) commitment. It's incredible commitment. I'm sorry, I had to laugh. It it reminded me of when Watt was on Hard Knocks, and he would like remember how he would perform for Hard Knocks, JJ. Yes, like in, yeah, that's what it was like. It was you know he was. I'm thinking, boy, the dedication to this and the in the huddle and we're on a knee and we're in the meantime like it's calling the play. For those who don't, if you haven't seen this, like there is a clip from Sunday Night Football talking about Russell Wilson and. He's spectacular. I, he's no one has been a bigger fan of Russell Wilson uh, than I have through the years in terms of him being underrated and how great he is and how much is on him and how special he is and all of that. I usually have him far too high, really ranked in the when we do uh, better or worse, in part because of it. But this is absurd. So it's like a two minute clip of him running two minute offense from the Sky Cam. Yeah. Now here's if you've never been to an NFL game on Sunday Night Football or a Super Bowl or something like that where they have that Sky Cam. Which is I don't, they don't have it every game, right? We have it now every game at First Energy. Do we have it every uh-huh. game now? Okay, so there's some places that have it every game. For a while, it was a reserve for Sunday Night Football, Monday Night Football, playoffs, Super Bowls, that type of stuff. Here's the deal: you know when it's on you because it's right above your head. So he's on a fe- on the field by himself, doing a two minute drill, miming a two minute drill, as the camera captures it. It's spectacular. At what point it's did he say to himself, "Okay"? I'm he gonna, went out and took the. He did the coin toss for overtime. At what point though did he say to himself, "I'm gonna even get on a knee and do the huddle"? Like I'm in the huddle. I'm I'm calling the play in the huddle. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he had to at least contemplate. He had to contemplate yeah, just and, how much am I gonna be committed to this act? And all the way, all in. By the way, did you see he was supposed to have 10 percent mobility in his finger, and he are 10 degrees, and he's already got 75 degrees, and they're saying that he's gonna crush the rehab and don't count him out. He could be back before you know. All for a guy who doesn't want to be there, reportedly. I think he loves the game. Just loves the game, yeah. No, I think he does, too, yeah. So, fascinating. Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, the Browns High School Football Game of the Week is back, and it's presented by Ohio Cat in association with Medliminal. Fans can vote now to determine this week's game on clevelandbrowns.com and at Browns on Twitter. Polls close Thursday at noon. This week's candidates, Independence at Brooklyn, Berea Mid Park at Olmstead Falls, Southeast versus JFK Catholic, and Villanja St. Joe's at Padua. Those are your four games. Winning team from the selected game of the week reserves twenty five hundred dollars for their high school football program. You can vote today. I like how every time I come in here, I drive by the Berea Mid Park High School, the new one, and I like how they did the big stairway up. It's a very Back to the Future. You can almost see Marty 
climbing the steps. They did a nice job. With you that. like that? I do like that. I think any any entrance to a high school needs to have multiple big steps up. Yeah, where you got to get in there. Yeah. yeah. You you're know, here. So you're gonna run Business. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. time to do some work. You got to run. You got to feel like a courthouse as you're doing the taking the steps up there. It's a good job out of that. Jake Trotter up next. You're listening to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
your Social Security benefits have been denied, call the Disability Lawyers at 1-800-ELK-OHIO. Elk Elk is a proud partner of your Cleveland Browns. Second hour of the program here on a Reaction Monday. And time to head out on the hotline for our good buddy Jake Trotter. Covers the Browns for ESPN's NFL Nation. Uh, Jake, I said earlier uh, in the show that uh, if this team is to accomplish, you know, what it thought possible before the season, that the crossroads of that season is right now. When you factor in injuries, when you factor in what happened on Sunday, uh, where were you now that uh, we're at the middle of the day, almost 24 hours later, with with where this team is and what it can still get done? Yeah, but it does feel like this is a fork in the road game on Thursday night, and you know Browns are going to be shorthanded. How shorthanded we'll see, uh, but it, it, it's a huge game. It's a winnable game despite the injuries, and if you get out of Thursday night with a victory. You have a winning record. You've got some winnable games coming up before the schedule strengthens again down the stretch of the season. So, I mean, John Johnson, the third set it today, he called it a must win. I mean, it, it, it's a massive game. I, I think if the Browns are going to get back on track, because uh, if you don't win Thursday, it, it starts to get kind of difficult finding enough victories on the schedule to get you where you think you need to be to get in the playoffs. And while this game – Obviously, it has left a, a, a sour taste in the mouths of many. You know, when you look at it, you mentioned fork in the road, must win. Those words are being thrown out. After week six last year, we weren't feeling great either. It was a big week seven that, frankly, was in the balance till the, the last moments down there in Cincinnati that maybe kind of turned things around for this team. But what, what needs to, if you're going to identify one thing that must get better, what is it? Yeah, I've been thinking about that Pittsburgh game last year, right? I mean, it just felt like, oh, my goodness, you know, this is not looking great. And then Cincinnati the next weekend, uh, you know, they played spectacularly in the, in the second half and, and were off and rolling from there. You know, Nathan, I, there's a lot of places, right? I mean, uh, you know, I think the quarterback has to play better uh, than he has. Yep. And I think, you know, there are reasons for that. Uh, he's clearly ailing right now. It's not a good – sign when your quarterback is wearing a sling, uh, even if it's to his non-throwing shoulder, which is uh, the case for Baker Mayfield last night. Uh, defensively, I mean, this is a defense that right now is worse than it was last year. And I know they played some good offenses, um, but they've also caught some breaks, too, where, you know, didn't have to play uh, Tyrod Taylor against the Texans and, and went up against, uh, you know, Justin Fields in, in, in his first start, uh, where he clearly, you know, might not have been ready for that moment. So, uh, you know, listen, the Cardinals are good. The Chiefs are good offensively. The Rams – I'm sorry, the Chargers are good as well. But uh, I don't think this defense by any means has met expectations, particularly, yeah. uh, you know, covering the pass. So, uh, you know, I think that's up there as well. They, they've just got to get healthy. I mean, they, they – you know, the, the low-key injury that has been killing them, I think, is Chris Hubbard because, uh, you know, you're down both starting tackles. I mean, that's what you have Chris Hubbard for you know, yeah. valuable six man who can step in if there's an injury to Jack Conklin or, or to Jed Wills. But then you lose both those guys and Hubbard, and all of a sudden you're just in bad shape at tackle. So I, I think there's a, a bunch of issues right now. I mean, I didn't get into all of them, honestly. I mean, um, but, but there's enough time for them to turn it around. And I think a win on Thursday, now you've got, you know, 10 days before your next game. Uh, you have some winnable games. Uh, I think the Pittsburgh game showed last year, uh, Pittsburgh to Cincinnati, that you can turn things around pretty quickly. But uh, you got to start stacking some wins because, uh, you know, you, you've got some tough ones still ahead. Yeah, you certainly do. And, and you're in a division where Baltimore wins again in impressive fashion over the Chargers. Uh, the Bengals now stacked another impressive win. You beat Detroit, yeah, but they acted accordingly. They whipped them. It wasn't even as close as 34-11 would lead you to believe. So you can't lose too much ground here. By the way, Pittsburgh wins their 3-3. Three and three. you got to start making a hay, and I understand the divisional games are left to be played. Um, when, when you think about these, these injuries that, that have occurred, specifically on the offensive side of the ball, and if it is, in fact, Dearnest and there is no Nick Chubb to join Kareem Hunt, if that, in fact, is – if that's the way it ends up going on Thursday, and we don't know that at this point, but if it does go that way and you don't have both those tackles back, from what you've seen offensively, we, and we talked about the defensive issues and they're, they're real right now, how do you go about your business to beat a team like Denver that's not very good? What does it look like, Jake? Well, I think number one is you can't lose the turnover battle – 
three yep. to nothing is what happened Sunday. And uh, those three turnovers turned into, you know, 13 Arizona points. Now, I think, you know, obviously Arizona probably wins the game going away. And I, I look at it the other way. If you take the Hail Mary out of the equation, yep. uh, you know, the Browns lose that game 37 to 7. Um, Which would be kind of like so, week six last year. It, yeah, it feels very week six ish. Uh, by the way, Baker, people forget, you know, was ailing in that Pittsburgh game. Yep. Uh, and if I remember correctly, it was his throwing shoulder uh, that was bothering Rips. him at that point. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of parallels uh, to last year in that sense. But, I mean, I, I think you're not, you're not going to be full strength no matter what. Uh, you can't turn the ball over. Um, you know, it would be helpful to have a big special teams play, you know, big defensive turnover, uh, you know, to take some pressure off the offense. And then you just you got to get back to to doing what you do, no matter who is at running back, which is you know running the ball, setting up play action, and and getting some shots downfield. They just feel like they they've gotten away from what they did so well last year at times last season. I mean, uh, I think it was the, like the first thirteen snaps, eleven of of them they were in shotgun, and yeah, you know the the, the Cardinals were daring them to throw. You know, Joel Batonio said today that yeah. they're facing a lot of six two fronts. Guess what? They're going to face a lot of six-two fronts going forward. Uh, the way that that game went Sunday, and they're going to have to figure out ways to establish the run, uh, get back in play action, and get Baker outside the pocket where he's most comfortable. I guess that's what I was asking: is if if is Kit right now? What do you what do you hang your hat on in the pass game? If, if you have to do that, and Arizona made us do it, you're going to probably see that against Denver. You'll see that against Pittsburgh. You'll see it against it. everyone's going to say. We're not letting these backs beat us, whether it's Dearness or the other two. We're not. So beat us throwing the ball. What can you hang your hat on in the pass game? I mean, you know what would what, what would help is to get Jarvis Landry back. I mean, we've forgotten about him yeah. completely um, because of all the other injuries and all the other issues. But you know, getting a uh, you know leader like that back on the field, uh, you know, to, to bring some continuity, uh, you know, kind of stabilize things in the passing game. I think I think would help. Uh, for sure, because you're, you know, you're really relying on some young guys right now. You know, Anthony Schwartz, uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones is like the only guy I felt like who played well uh, on yep. Sunday. Um, you know, getting some more experience out there I think would help uh, with the passing game. But listen, I mean, uh, you know, Jay, James Hudson I think is a really promising rookie. Uh, you know, I think he's a chance to be a good player. If You know, if he's having to block Von Miller, uh, that's, a, that's a matchup that Denver is going to – I think enjoy. So you've got to, you know, you, you got to get the tight ends on the field. Uh, you've got to try to protect your quarterback and um, you, you got to run the, try to run the ball, even, even if they're stacking the box, because that, that's, um, that's what's going to make you successful right now. Uh, I, I don't think that, uh, you know, trying to get into empty and, and throwing the ball down, downfield, uh, given where Baker is and given where the offensive line is, is, is probably ideal at this point. Yeah, Jake, when you watch Baker, and you mentioned the, the quarterback play needs to be a little bit better, what is kind of the biggest change that you've seen from the Baker who was humming? And, and frankly, we were one of the most efficient empty teams in the league last year over the second half of the season mm -hmm. to now we are not able to execute and take advantage of opportunities that, that may seem to be presenting themselves upon a second examination. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the misnomer about last season is that, well, the Browns just ran the ball all year. It really wasn't the case. I mean, no. down the stretch of last season, Tennessee on the road, Baltimore Monday night football, um, you know, Cincinnati on the road. I mean, they, those were games that the Browns won throwing the ball down the field. And, and they won because uh, – or, or at least had a chance to win the case of Baltimore uh, because of the way that the, the Baker Mayfield was throwing the ball. So, um, you know, I, I think – you know, number one, and this has been a problem all year, even when he was playing better on, uh, early on in the season, he's taken way too many sacks. Um, I, I haven't had a chance to check it after he, take, he took five sacks yesterday, but he was last in the NFL in sack EPA in the QBR metric. So, um, you know, part of that is the offensive line, but Baker's got to get rid of the ball. And, and the fumbles uh, yesterday, you know, they came from him kind of hanging in the pocket too much. He's, he's got to be – uh, you know, more decisive, and, and if something's not there, uh, you know, get rid of it or or, or something. Um, you know, I, I it's weird with with Odell because you know there were some moments yesterday where they really had it going, uh, and then there are other times, um, 
you know, whether it's Odell's end of it or Baker's, uh, where they're just not on the same page in, in key moments. Uh, you think about the fourth down drop uh, last week. Uh, you know, fourth down early on in the game, and fourth down, by the way, is a whole other issue for this team. Uh, but, you know, Baker, uh, you know, holds on to the ball. He's got Odell open. Wide open. Uh, doesn't see him, takes the sack, and then Arizona goes the other way. Uh, you know, and then at the end of the game, uh, you know, Odell, I think, you know, I don't know if it was quote-unquote a drop, but he had a chance to, to make a catch on fourth down yeah. uh, there as well. So, I mean, it, it's – um. It's a number of, uh, of issues. Like, you can't really pinpoint one thing. And then I think just from a team perspective, if they're not going to start converting some of these fourth downs, they're going to have to start taking some points. The Browns right now are going for it uh, on fourth down uh, more than anybody in the NFL by, like, a considerable margin. And yet uh, their offensive EPA per play on fourth down is, I tweeted it out this morning, is like in the low 20s. I mean, that's just not a formula – uh, that, that's going to beat good teams. Um, and I and I understand, you know, why they want to go for it on fourth down. Uh, but if you're not converting, uh, you know, it, it really starts to hurt you. And I think the one thing the analytics don't really measure is momentum. Yep. And you just kind of feel like the, the, the wind come out of the sail on some of these fourth down miscues where, you know, you had a chance for points and all of a sudden you got the, you know, Kyler Murray going the other direction. I and mean, that's tough. So, uh, there's a lot to iron out, and you know it's Baker, it's, it's the offensive line, the defense, uh, special teams. Even I mean, it's 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 really hard to kind of you know you ask me what ails this team. It's a lot. It it is a lot, and I think it's got to be very difficult for Kevin Stefanski when he says, "Okay, we, this is the process. We don't want to. If it's a good process, it's a good process. The outcomes have not been great because we're not executing." And I think when you go back and you watch, for example, that fourth down where they bring the house, it's cover zero, you look right, okay, you got three guys over there, they got three, it's not there, you got to come off it, and, and, and then Odell, he might have scored on that play, assuming he would have caught it. He would have scored. He was wide open, and, and you don't get it, yep. and that ends up being a massive backbreaker, to your point. Uh, I also think it's time for there, and there are a lot of people out there that have been you know, very down on Jarvis Landry. It's clear that Jarvis Landry means a hell of a lot to this football team. And to this, and to our quarterback, to Baker Mayfield, his presence on the field, he's just he he knows what to do when you need a play, you can get it to him, and he'll get open. And I think what we saw in this game, Jake, is that you know, and DPJ catches everything that's thrown to him. Hollywood typically does as well, but there's a different style of quarterbacking when you know you're you've got that with your guy. Whereas the, he'll just throw it up to DeAndre Hopkins, he'll throw it up to AJ Green. Do we saw you know Mike Williams? I'm going to throw it up to you, Keenan Allen. We don't necessarily do a lot of that, and I think Jarvis is the one guy where it's like, all right, I need, I'll put, he's going to find a way to get open, and he's going to catch this ball. Well, yeah, I mean, there's no doubt that Jarvis is Baker's go-to guy. I mean, Odell gets all the ink um, because he's, you know, he's the superstar, and he gets open uh, in the media. But, but, jo but Jarvis Landry is the go-to guy. Yep. on this team, and he's ba he's Baker's go-to guy. I mean, Case Keenan was telling me during training camp that. Uh, uh, Baker and Jarvis will, you know, they'll be out there in game-like situations or games themselves, and they will be connecting on plays that aren't even in the playbook, just from a look. I mean, that's the kind of rapport that they have, and you take that away from a quarterback. Um, and as talented as Odell is, I mean, I think it's pretty clear, Baker and Odell don't have uh, that, that kind of chemistry right now. So, um, you know, that that's something that, that, that is hurting Baker as well. And, and Maybe outside Baker, I, I, I think Jarvis is as big a leader in that locker room as anybody else on the team. And I'm not, not trying to slight anybody else, but, right. you know, he's just a guy that, you know, has been through the wars in Cleveland and, uh, and a guy that, that everybody on that team respects and really commands attention. And, you know, he's not on the field that hurt. So, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying if Jarvis were playing that all of a sudden they, they wouldn't be three and three. Uh, because I think it goes beyond just Jarvis Landry, but there's no doubt getting him back, whether it's this week or the Pittsburgh game, um, will make a huge difference. Jake, w one on the opposing quarterback with your familiarity uh, from covering the University of Oklahoma, would you have had him being this good, in most people's eyes, the MVP front runner here six weeks into the season? We're talking about Kyler. Kyler, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I knew as soon as Cliff got hired – uh, at Arizona that Kyler was going to be the pick because I, I had always, you know, I, I'd had multiple conversations, you know, about quarterbacks in general, but Kyler specifically, 
you know, where Cliff would carry on about how dynamic and great, um, you know, Kyler Murray was. And, you know, what, what makes Kyler so tough is, and I was telling somebody this yesterday, you can't get a shot on him. Uh, you, like, you, you, you know, he's a mobile quarterback, and with mobile quarterbacks, you worry about their durability, right? Um, but, but the way he's able to slide and kind of slither away and, you know, dock, he just doesn't take very many big hits. And so, uh, you know, he's able to – I think this is the other part of his game that, that's so difficult to defend is, you know, as good a runner as he is, what, 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 what would scare me – as a defensive coordinator is not him, you know, running for 10 yards, but running outside the pocket and then throwing the ball downfield. And how many times did we see him do that yesterday where you're like, he takes off and you're, you're thinking, okay, he's just going to run for the first down. He stops and, and then finds a receiver for, you know, 25 yards instead of taking the 10 yard run. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know who would, you know, maybe other than Lamar, you know, who ahead, would be ahead of him uh, in the MVP conversation right now. And Josh Allen, the, the other, other part of Arizona is, man, the receivers they have. I mean, it's just um, now that now that they're adding Ertz to that equation uh, next week, they're going to be uh, an absolute load to defend here going forward. Yeah, certainly are. Jake, good stuff as always, buddy. Appreciate you. Okay, guys. Take care. All right, that's our buddy Jake Trotter, ESPN NFL Nation Browns reporter, joining us on the hotline. You'll hear some players. I believe we have Joel Batonio at the at the podium, so that yeah. is coming up next. You're listening to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Well, few things better than kicking back in the evenings in your very own hot tub, especially in the fall, maybe even watching a little football along the way. It can happen. Northeast Factory Direct. Buy hot tubs, buy the truckload. Took everything you hate about shopping away. There's no big fancy showroom or annoying high-pressure salespeople. Northeast Factory Direct is a simple warehouse. Their sales staff doesn't work on commission. They pass the savings on to you. If you've always wanted a hot tub but didn't think you could afford one, now you can. Go see for yourself. West 140th Street in Cleveland, Lakeland Boulevard in Euclid, or Free Ray Drive in Macedonia, or shop them online anytime at northeastfactorydirect.com. Here's Joel Batonio at the podium. It's like a mash. You guys are down. Today, <clears throat> how, how tough is it? Seven minutes. You guys got to have the next man up mentality and what have you. But when the injuries start to mount like they are right now, how tough is it just to keep guys upbeat and, and pushing forward? Yeah, it's, you know, unfortunate. It, it's, I mean, you always deal with injuries in the NFL. Um, seems like it's piling up a little bit for us right now. But, um, but like you said, like, we have a game in, I don't know, three days now. So, like, we have to, we have to be focused on the guys that are going to be out on the field for us. And, you know, hopefully we can get a few guys back that, that haven't been out there and, and we can get guys ready to play. Um, you know, it's an unfortunate part of the NFL is guys get hurt. And, you know, it's how can you combat it and how can you step up and, and you know, have the next guy, you know, make a play for your team and, and find a way to win some of these games. Hey, Joel, uh, coach told us that Kareem is, you know, it's a significant calf injury. We'll, we'll miss more than three games. So I was just wondering, uh, you know, hits you I, obviously I know how uh how much he means to the offense and and you know how much you guys admire the way he plays um so what do you, what do you think of Kareem's situation have you been able to talk to him yeah I, I talked to him after the game um we didn't know how serious it was then he was just disappointed um you know to to get hurt like that but I mean the guy just like him and Nick and and I mean, some of the guys we play with, like, they just put everything they have on the line every time they touch the ball. I mean, sometimes this guy falls, and I'm like, I'm like, he's hurled over guys, you know, at the line of scrimmage and stuff, and he just wants to, to win so bad. Um, I really do feel like he represents, you know, how the Cleveland Browns want to play play um, football, and to see him go down like that is just unfortunate. And obviously, like, him and, him and Chubb are a, a big one-two punch, and him in the passing game as well, his pass blocking, he does a lot of things for us on offense. Um, so it's another it's another big loss, and you know hopefully he can come back and we can we can you know steady the ship without him. Yeah, we don't know Nick's status yet, but if you know Dearness Johnson has to carry the load or Demetrius Felton, you know how much faith do you have in those guys? A lot. Um, we've seen a lot from Dearness, like from the preseason, from the Dallas game last year. Um, he's done a lot of good things on special teams. He had a couple carries this game. Like there's a lot of you know a, a decent amount of experience with him. Um, and Felton, obviously, he's kind of been our gadget guy. We get him the ball in, in multiple ways. Um, you know, I know we have Kelly on the on the on the P squad who has some experience as well. So we we have faith in those guys. Obviously, we want our 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 guy Chubb back, but um, we have faith in those guys as well if their um, you know names are called. Uh, yeah, Joel, uh, just wondering with um, you know coming off of back to back losses, which obviously never has happened in the regular season under Kevin Stefanski and all these different injuries uh, and you guys being three and three right now, things feel, you know, not the way that you want them to. So my question is, how do you guys kind of avoid the, you know, sort of the doom and gloom feeling that, that it sort of feels like right now. And you as a team leader, how do you specifically kind of get everybody fired up through this rough time? Yeah, I think, you know, from a big picture point of view, like, do we want to be three and three? Like, no. Do we feel like we should be three and three? No, but we are three and three. And that's kind of like where we're at. Um, you know, luckily we have 11 games left and that's a, that's a long season, you know, starting with the Broncos in, in three days. And I think as a team, we understand we're not where we want to be. We haven't played a complete game yet. Um, you know, we got our butts kicked by the Cardinals um, yesterday and now we can only grow from that. Like, like there, if we hold our, if we put our heads down, if we uh, look back and say, man, we, we should have won a couple of those games we lost, like, like all that is, is not going to help us. You know, I think, I think the guys understand, you know, I know we're getting ready for, for Denver now, but the guys understand what has happened. We're going to learn from it. We're going to put our best guys out there and, and we're going to fight. And um, it's, it's actually not that hard. I mean, we have 11 games. We have a long season. Um, it, it's uh Everything we we want is still in front of us. Hey Joel, if you don't have your top two running backs and you don't have your starting tackles, can you can Kevin Stefanski keep the same game plan that he has for the first six weeks? Um, it depends. You know what the defense does. Like, 
yesterday they just ran a 6-2 defense. I mean, it's hard to run the ball on a 6-2 defense. That's why you kind of saw us passing the ball a little bit early in the game. Um, but it definitely changes your, your mindset. You know, I think we have our, our same strategy um, going into it. But, um, you know, I, I think it, it also depends on what the, what the defense gives you as well, what, what kind of strategy they're going to they're gonna run against us. But, um, you know, I think we're still going to want to try and establish the ball, uh, establish the run, and, and try and be physical up front. And hopefully that opens up the passing game a little bit. Was it a surprise that they ran that 6-2? Oh, we had seen it. We had seen it um, a little bit on film. You know, they ran it a little bit against the Niners. It seemed like anytime we put a big guy on the field, they added a big guy too. So, you know, we go two or three tight ends. They wanted to put another big guy on the field. Um, even when we were in, you know, our, you know, three receiver sets, it seemed like they would run base defense for them a little bit. We got them in, we got them in zebra, you know, we got them in nickel a few times and we were able to run the ball pretty well um, a couple of times. It, it wasn't a surprise. We, we knew it was coming, but you know, for a team to run 6-2 the whole, you know, for a majority of snaps, you know, that's, uh, they really want to take away, you know, one aspect of your game, the run game. Uh, Joel, just wondering how Hudson and Hans are you seeing improvement, you know, just, and what can you, I know it's a short week, but I would assume you're continuing to like maybe help them out during the week. Uh, how is that going? Yeah, I, I, we haven't watched the film as a group yet because we're, you know, short week but um you know i watched it blake watched it last night we talked a little bit this morning about what we saw um you know and, and you know blake's playing next to me so there's a lot more i can kind of help him with and i thought we had some good pass offs in the twist game um like you said we didn't get to run the ball as much but um he he told me he had a couple pass protections that he wanted back you know one with with jj and stuff like that but he's fighting man and and, and he's smart so he knows what he's doing we don't have really miscommunications in that part of the game and, and i think the game at left tackle is slowing down for him you know week to week um you know, I haven't, I talked to James a little bit this morning, but we haven't watched the film and it's just like, it's his first 30 start, um, you know, their snap count things and, and things of that nature where it, it stinks because it happens, but you, you know, you try and learn from those and try and keep improving, improving from those. You know, I, I do give those two guys credit though, man, they were not expected to play, you know, this early in their seasons and, you know, careers and, and they're going out there and fighting and competing and, um, you know, that, that's hopefully, you know, we improve from it and we keep getting better, but that, that's really what you can ask from those guys. Like those guys come out and, and they're working every day in practice to get better. And, and our, our coaches are working with them to try and get better. And, and we're trying to help them along as well. You're up. Well, you go to war with Joel Batonio anytime. That's the deal there. And, yeah. and, and you'll need to rely on it. all of that this week. Uh, short week, ton of injuries on the offensive side of the ball. Who knows the availability of the backs? Um, Certainly receivers as well. Uh, you feel like Odell would be fine, but coach said, well, that'll be a kind of a wait and see thing. Um, your quarterback's injured too. So you got a lot of questions here. You're going to need to rely on those veterans uh, to try and take care of business Thursday against Denver in a game that frankly will need all of you. You're going to need all of the home field in this one on Thursday. You are. We're going to need to be loud. And as I said, this is a game where you're going to want to lean on your defense against an offense that has not exactly lit up the scoreboard. You need to shut them down. Teddy Bridgewater is a guy that is very smart in his decision-making. If we bust, he will find those busts. But at the same time, he does not have the arm, especially outdoors, right. to try to throw and drive the ball in the intermediate and deep game. And so you have to be sound. You put them in third and longs. You play right to the sticks, and he will check it down to eight yards, come up and tackle. That's the other thing. I mean, we missed tackles in this game. Yeah, That touchdown by DeAndre Hopkins – that freeze frame before, as, as yeah. he catches the ball, Delpit's right in front of him. JOK's coming from the his right to the left from how you're looking at it. That's a freeze frame that you'd say, what's the outcome of this play? He gets tackled. 99 times out of 100, he probably gets tackled and said it's a touchdown. We've just got to be sound. That's what I said. I mean, it, it, it truly was an, a darn near everything that could go wrong did. did. Uh, sure both did. Every, every facet. Hammer hit some good balls, it. though. Yeah. Hammer and Donovan Peoples-Jones had good and he's, Good games. That's an incredible catch he makes on the on the Hail Mary to go up and get it. He's so strong. I, I like think, your Aquan Bolden. I think that's pretty good. I think the one he made on that curl route earlier is I just don't even understand it. He just catches it. You throw it there, he catches it. I mean, it just Yeah. The game's throw pretty, it more. He, that makes it pretty simple uh when you have somebody that good. Um what did you make of the hail and the rain before the game? Were you a fan of that or not? Anybody who's listening to watch Countdown, I think they saw my feelings on that situation as we Can were. Can we get a screen grab of? Somebody tweeted out. Anybody who watched Countdown yesterday, send out the screen grab while the hail's falling and our 
I wore a, a dark navy suit. Yeah. With kind of like a light blue pinstripe. Very faint, though. You'd have to yeah. be close to see the detail. Hanford was in a, I would call it like a light green suit. Oh, no. And Gerard was in a pink blazer. Oh, the pastels are not going to treat well with wet. So they are. They ended up in multicolored coats. It was like Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor dream coat. <laughs> it was a coat of many colors. I mean, it looks absurd. If somebody has screen grab, send it because Bo got or I'll, well, I can walk Bo down and New Rob's got it. New Rob, it. New yeah, Rob, he's got it. New Rob's listening. Send it. Send send us a uh, an image of it. I want to see it. He I sent me the it. gif where I where I broke the fourth wall and looked directly. Oh, I my, love doing that. I used my, to love breaking my the fourth ISO wall. camera, and I'm just like. In my in my TV uh, my TV days, breaking the fourth wall is always yeah. it's very exciting. I love when when that happens. Can I see that? Can I see your face? That's what I want to see. <laughs> this is about twenty minutes after being rain and hailed on, and I'm just like, what are we doing here? What's happening? <laughs> I need, I needed that on a Monday, especially this Monday. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna tell that, that we need is, a longer you know, version. We need like a here's little. Here's the deal. Here's the deal is you, you know, you can, your words, you can, you know, frustration, but facial expression is subconscious. I mean, it's just what you, it's the way you feel. You can't help it. And, and your disgust at that is pretty great. That is pretty good. And you don't get that out of you because you're a glass half full guy. You thrive on I'm enthusiasm. I'm just sitting there thinking, optimism. okay, it's not supposed to rain. Yeah. Okay. The temperature has dropped into the 30s quickly rapidly yeah it is i am soaked like to the point where it soaked through my suit into my boxers oh no it soaked through my suit to my shirt like i am so there's wind how am i gonna wind. dry my how and i got a whole game we're a long way from game this time. is right this is 11 30 i'm gonna be here until at least was there 7:30. any thought of going home and returning or was it there was a thought but as gibbe gibbe was making fun of me said i was in a, a foul mood so i just went up to rayo studio and sat in front of their heaters and i didn't talk for about two hours <laughs> I was pleasantly silent, look, though. Look, the, it's pleasantly the, the, silent. the rain we did not account for. Yeah. However, you not accounting for when the sun went down and things got cold is on you. I would have been fine. First of all, it was like 60 by four, 5 o'clock. I was fine throughout the game. Had I come in... If I were in more of that exact outfit in dry clothes, I wore ankles. So I had no socks. Yeah, no socks. But I was fine. At no point during yeah. the game was I cold, other than sometimes when the wetness that had now you know frosted and it bring a chill to my bone. Other than that, I would have been fine. <laughs> Jeez, what a day! It's like I said, everything that could did. We went through like ten towels just trying to wipe the desk off. There was so much water, I had to start doing the segment. I had to have my hands not on the desk. I'm not sure the desk survived yesterday. I, there could wow. be some bigger issues. Like if you put your arm on the desk, it, it was, was in like a in quarter water. inch of water. Oh my god! So I just sat like this. Jeez. But we got it through, professionals, well, pros. Big, big what are you shout do? out to Das, Hanford, and Gerard. Good job out of you guys. We'll go around the league coming up next. You're listening to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Cam Luthi. I don't know what <laughs> get this in a second. Gambling without setting limits on how much you're going to wager, how long you'll play as like a football team going into a game without a game plan, it's probably going to end up in a loss. So always set limits before you bet. Get more tips like this at keepitfunohio.com. For whatever reason, it popped into my head. The You were talking about succession off the top of the show for a little bit, five seconds. And we were, it reminded me of when uh, Connor, Connor's girlfriend goes <clears throat> to Logan, like, what are you going to tell him? Because he was assigning everybody jobs. And he told them that to keep an eye on the Balkans. <laughs> You too. Keep an eye on the Balkans. Uh, we'll do it, Dad. They we've got the, we've to got the Balkans. we've got the Balkans under control. I did like how he told her that. No, let's just embrace how bad your play is, and we'll we'll market it that market like, it that hate way. market it so that pe- hipsters yeah. will think it's cool to like it. I thought that was pretty smart. Well, actually. in the previous episode, he asked his dad to float him a little hundred mil. Just float me. Can you float me a hundred mil? Incredible. For what? Incredible, folks. Get on that show. It's great. Uh, and yes. it's it's really you can fly through it pretty quickly. Go ahead. Were you surprised at how like I felt like that show deserved the way that like Throne sometimes would do like almost a five minute. Here's what you need to know prior to this season. I thought this the is se- my theory. The recap was light. This was my theory Okay, that that show hasn't aired in two years in terms of new episodes and that most people either rewatched it or just watched it within the last three months because it's gotten a lot of buzz in the last three months and people jumped into it and watched it then just have the options but just yeah a five you should have a you should have had a, a better recap than that there was there's a lot wildly insufficient i mean yeah. the there's a lot going was on. left out of the recap correct there's I a almost, lot going on i almost feel like they're just moving on from that and pretending like that didn't happen like that was a cool story that we well, did no they were not no because they he acknowledges it. Kendall acknowledges it in the car. He did, but that but I mean, if you were trying, if you were trying to do like Friday Night Lights when they act like you know, what's his name Landry and what's her name didn't cover up. I mean, sure. Then they just act like it didn't happen. But I, they, it happened. They put it in the script, so they, they put a wink, wink to it. Not a. But that to me is the first thing where, oh, you're gonna do this. Well, let's not yeah. forget that you. Let's just not forget that you did this. Killed somebody. Yeah. Um. Dead. Yeah, it was good. It was really good. All right, uh, around the AFC North, Steelers get a win. They hold off and beat Seattle in overtime. That was pretty brutal. They're limited, but they're, yeah. they're, they closed it out, and T.J. Watt made a big-time play at the end of the game. The um, Collinsworth, I don't even know if he was buying what he was selling. He's talking about Geno Smith, you know, trying to put himself into position to having a late career renaissance or a sec. I'm going, Chris, you can't even be buying this. You can't be buying this. I'll give them credit. They made a good adjustment at halftime because it looked like yeah. that game was going to be a something to zero where they maybe picked up three first downs all game. And they came out and gave the ball to Alex Collins, former Raven, and ran all over him. They did. Yeah, they absolutely did. And um, they are two and four. The Ra- You want to talk about an attention getter in the words of Buford T. Justice. The Ravens absolutely beast the Chargers 34 to six. Uh, in that one, Lamar wasn't particularly sharp, but he made all the throws he the needed to. Dominant. And the defense was absolutely dominant. That's the scary part because I, I kept hearing out of Baltimore in the preseason, the deep, those guys aren't coming along the way that they wanted them to. Marcus Peters done for the year. That was a huge injury at the time. Huge. And they're fine. They are just fine. They are 5-1. and one. That's a team that so easily could be 2-4. and four. Yeah. And yet, here they are at 5-1. and one, And so this they're was dangerous. Impressive, though. Oh, this was Oh, I had an opportunity as I was trying to dry off in front of the heaters <laughs> with Gibbe to watch quite a bit of that. That was a, the NAS, at least that was CBS was showing that game, and it was very impressive. Lamar's little sidearm, just little poofs, are great. Yeah, yeah, he is. That wasn't even his best he had game. A cool that moment. Monday night was so good. Yeah, he had a cool moment last week at the end of last week with the video team with the Ravens, where they set up a deal where. Um, the folks from Louisville, the coaches at Louisville, tell him through a Zoom that his number eight is going to be retired at Louisville. He's just the second player at Louisville to have his number retired. Oh, by the way, the other one's Johnny Unitas. He's not even 25 years of age yet. Lamar doesn't turn 25, I think, until January. Um, so he got emotional, and it was it was cool. It was a cool moment. And you know what? He's such a good guy. Appears to be. Appears to be. Yeah, Could have been nice to everyone else. Yeah. Oh, he was so great to everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Gracious. Uh, the Bengals, 4-2. and two, They whipped the Lions 34-11. to 11. You say, well, Bo, what? of course they whipped the Lions. The Ravens was, didn't whip the Lions. No. And, and 
The Detroit Packers had lost on last se second field goals in a couple of weeks. Uh, pe they hung with people. They hung with the Niners. They hung with. They came back on the Niners. They hung with the Packers, and the Lions whipped them. And Jamar Chase is, boy, he's example one. And not all receivers are this, but when you get a game wrecking receiver, and you have the opportunity to trade to draft one, you draft one, because if you draft Panay Sewell, I'm telling you right now, this this Bengals team is not four and two. Jamar Chase gives them something that they've never that they frankly don't have. I don't know if they they haven't had it since probably Pete Chad Ochocinco. Ocho. Well, AJ, AJ Green. they've had a couple of them. Yeah, yeah, they've had a couple of them. But he's so explosive. Sever His separation is crazy. Twenty-seven catches, five hundred fifty-three yards, twenty point five a catch, and Jeez. five touchdowns. Gosh. And then they have two guys. They have Tyler Boyd who works underneath very well, and they have T Higgins who's big and near the red zone. You can throw it up to him. Mixon is a stud. They're good. Joe Burrow's averaging nine yards per attempt. Now, it's crazy. He's thrown seven picks already, 14 touchdowns, so still a two-to-one interception ratio, but he's averaging nine yards an attempt. Yeah, he's – he throws it He's down elite. Too. Yep, he is. Um, around the league, Dallas, do you, do you guys happen to – were you home in time or was I on the phone with you with the walk-off, CeeDee Lamb walk-off? We were on the phone. We were on the phone. Yeah, we were on the phone talking, and, and CeeDee Lamb walked it off. See you later. Thanks a lot. That hurt me in the Jeez. scores. Couldn't just kick a field goal there? No. Well, the that, I, th I thought for sure I was going down, and then, I, I, oh, let's just walk it off. I saw the highlight of him showboating into the end zone. There is no question I would have put him into the wall. Of course I, you would, I would have. been. I, he tried I, to, and he popped right back up. And then and he waved. Right then I would have started throwing haymakers. Right like this. I'd, have, I'd have dropped guy, him again. Guy smokes him. So he holds the ball out and really loafs in like, Barely makes it. He does. But he makes it. He scores. He holds the ball out. He scores. They sh the defensive back shoves him to the ground. He rolls over, spins right back up, and waves at him. I just speared him. Oh, man. I put him down oh. again. You just can't walk off. You can't hate when he's – when He's, he's so stop good. Him. Stop him if you don't want that. He is so good. That was pretty good. Um, the best heel turn, of course, was in Chicago, which was the easiest game of all weekend to pick, where Aaron Rodgers – told uh, Chicago fans after scoring the game-winning touchdown and doing the uh, the belt, I've owned you my whole life. I still own you. Yeah, That's what he said. That's pretty I love Picked Aaron up Rogers. on a mic. All right, hold on. Let me ask you. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Huh? Hold on one second. You love that, and you have no problem with that. But There's CD, a track record. C.D. Lamb in a walk-off situation. I'm putting him through a wall. He waves me. I'm doing this. You, you have no pride. You're, so if you're a Chicago Bear, you're prideless. But if you're a Patriot now, you're upset. Well, I mean, the Bears knew before a kickoff yesterday they were going to get beat. I'm just saying there feels like there's a little bit of hypocrisy happening. No, no, no. A little no, no, double no. standard. There feels day, like, perhaps? Yeah, there feels like a, a double standard. There's no double standard. If you're if, – if, if you're doing a little showboat into the he end zone. He didn't even do anything that bad. It was a barely a showboat, and then the guy pushes you know, him, the guy walks in. It was barely anything. We've he seen Dion way worse. He Dion high the last no, 10 No, I'm watch, watching get it right now. Here. You get out of here with that noise. Come on. Dallas is good. Dallas is good. CeeDee Lamb. Diggs got another kick, another uh, return touchdown. And he got beat on an out and out, but the safety should have had his back, I think. But he, got a, he had another pick six. He's got seven now? Yeah. On the season? That's right. Man, that's, that's getting it done. That is crazy. He's got, a, I mean, seven picks in six games. Is that's that pretty more good. than our entire team? I can't imagine. Yes, yes we have two. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, more it's than, I close. think, every – it's like more than can be like many teams that have teams. seven, yeah. Um, so, it's I'm interesting. I'm upset now. I love – first of all, Sealand, to it's me, great. Yeah. nothing wrong with this at all. In fact, I've seen way worse, way worse. I'll tell you, when he starts trotting – at the five, he puts the ball. He doesn't even heist it. He does nothing. He gets pushed he and goes, he gets up and goes, waves. It's slow. He just kind of. It's a little slow, good. but it's not egregious by any. No, stretch. I liked it. I it's not money it. Lynch jumping into the end zone. No. Whilst just gesticulating towards his opponents. No, no, it's definitely and not that. I think, boy, wow. Did you, um, Mahomes threw more picks yesterday. He now has seven picks. So, did you guys – you guys were at the game, so you probably didn't see this, but this was a red zone. We had the red zone on. Okay, yeah. so you had it. Booth, so, you saw yeah. this prominently. Um, they have no run game. They cannot run the ball. No. They're not real good at protecting him. There are very few spots where he hits a spot and throws it. Most times, no, it's, it's he's on the drifting, run. Drifting, moving. <laughs> Drifts all over. He makes a play where he reverse pivots, reverse pivots again, 
is drifting to his right and then throws back across his body left to, I think it was Tyreek Hill for about 27 yards on a third and forever. Yeah. He's doing so much for them. I know he's got a ton of picks, but what he's being asked to do every single game is, uh, is pretty crazy. Yeah. Pretty crazy. He's got it all on his shoulders and, and, you know, I said some idiots on social going, oh, well, you got to pay him 400 million. Gladly. Gladly. Yeah, it's going to be the steal of the century. Him? Right. Yeah. Steal of the century paying that kid I, the $400 million. They have no no defense, no offensive no. line, no run game. They, they can't run him. it. They can't block it. And Kelsey, is Kelsey okay? Do we? Yeah. Have I don't know. He's that? banged up. Hill's a little bit banged up. Did you guys see Urban get bailed out by the by the Dolphins? Okay. Zagura lost <sighs> his mind in the booth. The only time Zagura what? talked in two hours. What are we doing? There are so many people who don't know football. It's crazy. He dove forward, so he didn't give himself up. You yeah. just don't touch him, and the clock expires. Game's over. It's over. Go to overtime. Why would you touch him down? I have no idea. It's absolutely insane. I, no I know it's instinct, but that's where you I'm touch. I'm screaming. Do not touch we, the ball. We went the other way on the scores on that one because yeah. was it was all about the grind for me. All and, the grind. And I told – I'm yelling at, at 10 seconds. I'm like, why are they not taking a timeout? They should have. Take a timeout, throw it over the middle. You have the timeout, throw it over the middle, and do exactly what they ended up doing. But I'm like, why are you not taking the time out? What are you doing? And they clearly were setting up like, oh, well, maybe we should kick a field goal. Run a play and kick a field goal. Well, yeah, do that. Yeah, but I'll, just don't touch him. Just don't touch him. It's awful. And it ended up being the Dolphins who take the time out, didn't they? Dolphins were so – they did so many bad things on Buffoonery. that. Buffoonery. Um, By the way, that one ball did touch the guy's finger. I don't understand. Like, what does it oh, need? Oh, I know. What does it need to be – what's clear and you can freeze frame it and you can see the ball and then you see his finger bend – the only way it Correct. could if, if force was applied to it by an object, which in this yeah. case was a ball, and they say, no, it didn't touch him. What? Crazy. All right, we will get you uh, a little, little football tonight, Bills and Titans. Get you set for that coming Do up. Do the next. opposite. <laughs> Cleveland Browns Daily, 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Stop by Raisin Cane's this holiday season. Enjoy hand-battered, cooked-to-order chicken fingers with the Peanuts Gang. Visit RaisinCane'sGear.com to purchase limited edition Peanuts t-shirt. Net proceeds will be donated to Canine Companion. Its mission to provide trained assistant dogs to people with disabilities. You're looking for a place to have fun while working hard? Raising Cane's is hiring as well. Visit WorkAtCane's.com or text RC Jobs to 97211. Raising Cane's, one love. Bills at Titans. Who you got, Dr. Z? Oh, boy. This week's a big crud as far as I'm concerned. Why don't you tell them who you got? It's probably better advice. I'm taking the Bills. Who cares? They've been blasting people. Bills. Big. 34. 29. Ram it. Hope you guys are paying attention. Titans sounds like.